Welcome back all you fabulous subscribers and amazing runners that are out there. I'm Dustin Hall and today I'm giving you my updated review of the Ultra Mont Blanc. If you watch my first video, you know that I was all into the hype of this shoe. Many great things about it from I just love that collar. Oh, I love it. To the fact that it was designed for racing. Now that I have roughly about 50 miles into it, I want to bring you my honest opinion. Like always, I'm not sponsored. No one provided this for me. I'm not paid. This is my honest review. So let's talk about what I still like about the shoe at 50 miles. This Vibram light based traction, I think's great. I've had it in some mud on some slick rock. I've had it in gravel and creek beds. I've even taken it on asphalt. I've had no issues with it. They need to put it on all of their shoes, including the Lone Peak, which is a Lone Peak. The Ego Max midsole at 33 millimeters of stack height. I really like it. And that's because to me, it's squishy enough that I can feel that when I'm running, but also it's enough to give good foot protection because there's no stone guard. There's no rock plate in there to help absorb that. But when I'm on the trail, I don't feel a lot of sharp objects underfoot, which is tremendous. And I also believe that stack height allows me to still confidently hit some technical terrain. And the last thing that I really like about this is the airiness of the upper. It is light, it's breathable, uh, it dries quickly. But that's where the likes for me end. And then we get into more of the issues, the big dislikes. The first you'll notice, I had to gut the shoelaces. Those round paracord laces were absolutely terrible. And I didn't want to pay another five to $10 for shoelaces, so I had to gut an old pair. Small problem, but at $180, that is something that they should have got right out of the box. Now, the flat laces help slightly alleviate one of the other problems, and it is this paper-thin, short tongue that they have in there. You can definitely, when you cinch down the shoe, feel the laces still at this point, because it's paper-thin. And I don't know why Ultra's doing it, but the tongue is just too short. Because if I do a runner's knot, I'm coming up almost off of it. And I've heard from other runners that there's a fix to add some padding there, but now we're talking another expense. Even if it's a few dollars, laces, that padding, another $10, we're talking 190 before we get this on the foot to try it out. Another minor complaint, and I forget who said this, but I didn't really notice it until they did, but they were spot on. The midfoot is really narrow through here. I get that they're saving weight to make this a light racer, but I could feel that in my foot. I mean, Ultra's known for wider feet, but they've almost made this like choke point. So if my foot wasn't landing quite flat, I, I could feel it press against it. And it wasn't a deal breaker, it was more annoying. And as I ran in the shoe more, it became less obvious but still wasn't happy about it. Then from there, the biggest dislike, and I would say that this is the Achilles heel because we're talking about that heel. It's just shallow. There's just not enough in there. Like I can, I just, there's not enough material in that heel to help get a good lockdown. And while running on flat terrain or rolling terrain wasn't a big deal, when I started tackling some hills, I got that slippage. And I've had bad blisters on my heel before. And I just don't want to take that kind of risk in a shoe that was designed for racing. Because if you've been there as an ultra runner, you know as well as I do that if you start to get that hot spot and it's not addressed soon, it's going to be a major problem. And it could be the difference between you crossing the line and getting the buckle, the metal, and a DNF. And I'm not willing 
to take that chance. So overall for me, unfortunately, Ultra, I know you tried. I wanted to love it. But this shoe's probably going to stay in the box most of the year, other than shorter, easier runs. I can't see myself putting it in the bag at this point. If you've had a different experience or there's something that you really think's the game changer about the shoe for you, I'd love to hear it. Let me know in the comments down below. And make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. See you all soon as I'm headed into the Thunder Bunny 50K here in a few weeks.